my mindset was to go, you know, try to get back and, and win. You know, you, anytime that, you know, when I left in 93, I left on top in terms of winning. I was coming back in 95, halfway in the season, and still my mentality was about winning. Uh, now, granted, physically I wasn't prepared for winning at that time because I had a baseball body, but uh, it took me a while to understand my teammates, understand you know their motivations. Uh, it, 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 you had to understand that when I started with the Bulls, um, you know it was 5,000 people in the stands, so you know it was like playing to an empty arena, you know. And when these guys are coming in. The arena has been sold out for six years, you know, so I, I wanted them to understand, you know, and Luke to understand as well as uh, Judd Bushler and Steve Kerr and all the guys that were new, where we transformed from so that you can feel that energy and you can understand what it feels like playing in front of the, fi the, the, the fans who for years were always believing that uh, we'll wait till next year. We'll wait till next year. Well, we were the team that was on top now. I thought it was very important for them to understand that, that history and that dynamic about the, what, the, what the Bulls actually experienced and I experienced. So I felt compelled, once I got to know those guys, to kind of push them to understand, okay, we, we, we're not in the bottom anymore. We're on top. And when you're on top, everybody's coming at you. So you have to be prepared. You got to be ready to play. And did you think Luke was ready? Did you think that he had what it took to work with you to win a championship again? I didn't know. Uh, I, I think what would uh, I think Luke can answer that a little bit better than I can. I, I, I felt the need to push him. I know at that time they hadn't won. Uh, a lot of those guys have never won in terms of the you know world championship or something to that you know, magnitude and. Um, so I knew it was going to take, it take some learning uh, for them to understand that. That's where my role uh, became very vital uh, to lead and to give them that, you know, that, that knowledge that they need. Uh, along with Phil, obviously Phil was, you know, the leader, but in terms of basketball leadership, when I say I led, I led based on, you know, physically, you know, I get out there, first one there, last one to lead, work on my skill set, blah, blah, blah you know, listen to what the coach, try to, you know, do whatever the coach is asking. Uh, that was the leadership that I wanted everyone to see and then reinforce it with my voice when I felt the necessary need to do so. So I felt that, you know, no, I don't think Luke had the mentality of what it took to win, uh, but I think he earned that over the years that we played together. And obviously, you know, following our leadership, Phil, myself, Scotty, you know, um, just so that he can understand what it would take and how his skill set could fit. And so what sort of skills did he need to develop more? Was it skills or attitude or both? I think it was both. You know, I, I, he had the skill set. You know, seven footer, pick and pop, shoot, rebound, block shots, uh, defensively understood uh, exactly what to do, set great screens. Uh, but the mindset of being able to do that every single night, do that against teams that were more physical and teams that are less physical, it was a mindset that I felt like Luke had to learn, and I think he did learn. Uh, you know, and, and we all had to, had to learn over the period of our careers. And um, you know, but when we were going against the teams like New York Knicks, you know, Indiana Pacers, uh, Miami Heat, you know, it's a certain mentality that those teams are being coached at. We had to match that, if not surpass that. Uh, and I think that was the growth of what Luke had to learn. And so Luke was the first Australian in the NBA. What did you think of his Australianness? Laid back. Um, I, I'd never seen Luke mad, to be honest. And uh, he, his, his personality is that he, you know, every day, good day, mate. You know, you, you feel that warmth coming from him. And, you know, and that's good. You know, it's good to have that mentality and you feel like, you know, you're very fortunate each and every day. And, you wake up, you enjoy your life, you, you live it by the moment, but there's times when you have to push yourself a little bit. And, that, and you, know, you wanna see that frustration, you wanna see a little bit of anger. And Luke did at times, it, you had to do a little pushing to get that, but his mentality is that he, you know, he just enjoys being around people. He is, 
he is that gentle giant. You know, he's always been big, you know, wherever he was growing up and been around. So it's quite naturally, he always wants to feel welcome and wanted to, you know, in, uh, connect with someone, you know, maybe a smaller person or, you know, anybody. Uh, that's a great trait to have. Also, that trait has to be adjusted, especially when you're in competition, you know, because you want that dominance to be shown. You want that intimidation to be shown in competition. Uh, it's not a negative thing. It's always a positive thing in terms of, you know, how you utilize it. But, you know, it took a while for him to get to that. So he had to toughen up. You had to show him a little tough love. You know, that's what I call it, tough love. And, you know, great. I, I loved him as a teammate. You know, I, I think that, you know, any day that I felt frustrated and angered, uh, I can look at Luke and know that, you know what, it's, it's not that hard. It's not that, you know, this is not you know, life of death. You know, he simplifies things. His, his whole mentality is to do that. And that's his personality. And it's good to have people around that can do that. You know, when you have people like myself who are somewhat aggressive, you know, we live in every moment, you know, we wanna dominate every little moment. Uh, and we forget about how simple life is, how simple the moment may be. Uh, this is where he was a great, you know, a great teammate and helped me mature as a person. A sort of balance to your intensity sometimes. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Okay. And so what did you think were Luke's strengths and what did you think Luke's weaknesses were? His strength was he could shoot. You know, he, he was very smart, good passer. Physically, you know, he, he, he could use his, his body very well in terms of rebound and positioning. His weakness was, I would say, his, you know, make sure mentality-wise to be aggressive, you know, uh, you know, have that killer instinct, you know, in, in, in that, you know, you want to dominate, you know. And there's times where I had to push him on that, you know. And, uh, you know, and, and he received it well. I mean, you know, it wasn't as if, you know, it was a constant resistance or, or I felt the necessary, to need, the necessary need to do it every time we played. No, it was, you know, it was a process that, you know, when you win and you learn, you, you apply that over a period of time. And, and with Luke, he did. Uh, but his strong points, his athleticism, he didn't have the athleticism as most bigs, but he had the smarts. You know, he, he knew how to position himself well. He knew, he, he knew how to play against someone like a Patrick Ewing, who he knew was far more gifted athletically. Uh, but he was able to utilize his strength, which is shooting on the perimeter, post up using his left his right hand his physicality to you know to at least make himself known you know um, and it was up to us to compliment him you know make him as important as a Patrick Ewing in situations where he could dominate or he can actually you know lead us um, and we we did that you know I think Phil did a good job in trying to gauge Luke's uh, motivation that per game let's just say we start the game and Obviously, our focus is to go inside, and we were going to Luke early, and Luke knew that. And if Luke felt compelled that, or he felt like he was into the game, he can give us that, you know, that that lift that we needed from that inside play. If not, then you know we would have to go to other, you know, other routes to try to, you know, assert ourselves as a team. Were there times that you were aware that Luke was finding some of your criticisms quite tough? Yeah. I felt that. I mean, and you know, that's look. I, I I think it was a lot of situations where people were you know somewhat critical in terms of the way that I perceived it, and you know. But I had a mission. You know, I wanted them to understand what it took to win. You know, and <clears throat> winning has a price. Um, and the thing is, is that you know I, I wanted to make sure they were prepared for the worst. You know, especially in competition and. You know, there, I'm pretty sure there were times they were not happy with me. Uh, I think if you look back now, I'm pretty sure they are, you know, based on how we, we achieved and the successes that we, you know, we were able to, to overcome. And, um, but, you know, as a leader, you, you know, you, sometimes you don't, you, you're not going to be well liked. Uh, you're not going to be, you know, but you have to pull them along, um, you know, because you know you've experienced it, you understood it. Uh, the other side of that road is success. And I, I think that, you know, the, the gratification would be there once we get over that hill. And uh, I felt that, 
and and I can sense some of that coming from from my teammates. But you know, the thing is, is that we, for us to be successful, someone had to do that. You know, especially from a leadership role. Did you sometimes wish that you didn't have to be like that? Yes, yes. Uh, only because I felt like you know everybody you you would you would assume that everybody had the same mentality as I had, and that every day you're the first one in the gym, last one to leave. You know, uh, you live within the moment. You know, you strive to be uh, strive for perfection each and every time you step on the basketball court. But unfortunately, everybody don't have that same mentality. Uh, and if they did, then it makes my job so much easier. It's like looking at a you know a mirror of 11 or 12 people. You know, and unfortunately, the world is not made that way. Um, and you know, sometimes you have to push, pull, or do whatever you need to uh, to get over that hill. You know, and the gratification is always going to be in the work. And once the work is done, and you see the, you know, see how, where, where the achievement has has been met. You know, um, so yeah, I wish, you know, I, I could have, you know, laid back and enjoyed it as much as everybody else, but the, that, not, that didn't guarantee us success. You know, that didn't say we're gonna win, you know. Um, you know, so I had to do what I had to do. Over the years, you know, that you played together, did your opinion of Luke change? Did you enjoy playing t together by the end of those years and come to really value what he gave to the team? I did, I valued it, and I also understood how to get, get it out of him you know, how to challenge him, you know, as a teammate, you know, and, and the thing is, and I think Luke understood, you know, he understood that, you know, if he, he, he mixed, he missed that box out, then he's going to hear, you know, obviously some verbal, you know, words coming from me, from, you know, the expectations were solely, totally different. Once he proves that he could do it, the task is to do it every single night, you know, that's the thing, you know, and that's where I, I felt like I knew he was capable. We all felt he was capable, but you have to be capable every single night for us to maintain the success. So I pushed him. Obviously, I did. And, and verbally, you know, I, I would challenge him in certain situations where I felt like, you know, look, you just you're not you're not doing what we expect you to do. You know, and I would welcome that, too, for my you know, if they see that I was doing something that they pretty much expected, and, and I was taking shortcuts, which wasn't too often. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I was open. You know, Phil would criticize me. You know, other teammates would criticize me. And, I, you, you know, the, the purpose of improving and the purpose of being a good teammate and the purpose of, of being a good team is we all have to look in the mirror and understand, okay, what can I do better to make this team better, you know? And we also have to be willing to accept constructive criticism, nothing personally. You know, we hung out, we had fun, you know, we would joke around, you know, it's nothing personal, but in competition, when you're trying to, you know, exceed and be successful, we have to hold each other accountable. That's what teammates do. And, uh, and it's nothing really personal about it. Yes, Luke admits that consistency was his big issue and that he struggled with it and you struggled with the fact that he wasn't consistent enough. Yeah, it was times like that. And I'll give you a good example. <clears throat> he may not like this story. Um, in 98, we were playing the Utah Jazz. Did he ever tell you this? I'm not sure which story this one's going to be. In Utah Jazz, <clears throat> Scottie Pippen was out, you know, and we knew we just played Utah in the finals the year before. So every game we play against Utah is a message. You want to send a message. So... He is, we go to, I go to Luke at the beginning of the game. I say, look, Luke, we have to, we got, you have to establish yourself inside. You have to dominate. We're going to come to you early. You're going to really going to have to set the tone for us because we don't have Scotty. It's me and Dennis and you. Uh, so he understood that. He knew the importance of that. The first quarter ends. Luke has 12 points, four blocks, and four rebounds. And I go to Luke, I say, that's how you play, man. You do that, we dominate. We're up by 16. We're up by 16. We're killing them in their building. At the end of the game, Luke had 12 points, four rebounds, and four blocks. It's like he sufficed 
the anticipation or, or what we wanted him to do in the first quarter, but he forgot it was three other quarters. We are winning by 16, we lose by 15. So <laughs> now my frustration is like, you know, it's boiling. And, I'm, uh, and I go into the locker room and I'm sitting down, I'm just trying to figure out how did we lose this game? We seemed like we had a good rhythm the first quarter, blah, blah, blah. And, and Luke's sitting across from me. And once again, Luke has this demeanor that, you know, he doesn't really show like I'm, I'm like I'm, I'm like boiling over here, but I'm really trying to hold it in because I've, it's just one game. But I understood the significance of the game because we're playing against Utah. You want to make sure that we send a message. And Luke says, "It's okay, mate. It's okay." And the way that he said it made it seem like he didn't really receive it the way that I was receiving it. And I just chuckled and I and you know and I just looked at Luke and I said, "You know what, Luke." That is the last time I'm going to give you a compliment in the middle of the game. Because you don't receive compliments well in the sense that you feel like you just, you stop and you don't really pursue. And I said it, you know, from a, you know, chuckling because I was really frustrated as opposed to yelling. I wanted him to understand, look, man, you don't have to just, you know, you, you have to keep playing. You don't play just for one quarter just so that now, I can look at you and say, you're doing a great job, blah, blah, blah. And I, I get it, but we still have to play the other three, three quarters of the game. And it told me more about Luke in the sense that, <clears throat> you know, you got to keep pushing him. You got to keep pushing him. You got to keep pushing him. You can't let him get comfortable because he gets comfortable, then he relaxes, you know. And we need him to keep being aggressive, you know. And from that point on, I, I didn't do it in a way, I don't think I did it in a way to, to point, point, or jab, or jab, or punch, punch. It was almost like, okay, I gotta, I gotta keep encouraging him. I gotta keep encouraging him. Even when he's doing well, I gotta keep encouraging him because he needs that, you know, that reinforcement. You know, that was the thing I learned about Luke. And once I learned that, then I understood how our relationship was gonna be established. And, you know, a hug is probably more than a yell, you know. You know, a, you know, a pat on the back is probably more than a punch, you know, that type of thing. And, you know, once I was able to understand that as a leader, then we can always have a certain dialogue. Okay, mate, you know, I can, I can, you know, go back and forth with you, but also I know how to get you to this point that we need you to be consistent. Phil was good at it. I learned it from Phil. Phil understood that with Dennis, he understood that with me, he understood that with Scotty, Tony, Steve, all of, and that was the strong points about who Phil Jackson was. I had to learn that through him, you know, and then when I got back, obviously, I had different personalities that I hadn't been with, so I had to earn, understand who these people were so that I could have a relationship, you know, the Steve Kerr and the punch and, you know, Tony Kukoc from the 92, you know, dream team, blah, blah, blah. Once we understood how those dynamics would work, the communication aspect was much simpler. So you obviously taught Luke a lot. Did Luke teach you anything? You kind of intimated yes. a little bit then that you realized that you had to kind of meet the person where they were at. Was, was there anything else that Luke taught you? No, I think, <laughs> I mean, his, his calm demeanor and, and his acceptance for all different types of people uh, is an unbelievable trait, you know, and I was able to learn and watch and analyze how he uh, built his relationship to, you know, coexist with in, in his personalities and, and his, his friends and things of that nature that okay, I could take bits and pieces of that. Now, could I change my personality? I can't, you know, but at least I can have a better understanding for how other people are thinking so it can alter my thought process and how I would adapt to certain people. So yeah, I learned things from Luke. I learned things from other players, um, but my, my personality is always gonna be dominant no matter what, but at least it was a, it is a, a consideration to understand and appreciate who I'm playing with and, and, and what gets them to tick and how do you, you know, relate and, and have a relationship with them. I mean, those are things that I had to make adjustments to. 
So you won two three-peats, which is just beyond incredible. How hard was that second three-peat for you? Sort of just summarising all of that up for me. Uh, well, it's, it, it was harder than the first three-peat. Um, mainly because I think, you know, anytime you continually repeat things, it's harder from a mentality standpoint to create that hunger. Uh, as if you never won or you, you know, you're just winning for the first time. Uh, the first three-peat was a team that was together for a long period of time, you know, pretty much eight, nine years, you know, we were together. Uh, second three-peat was a patchwork, you know, we got players from different places, um, you know, and I wasn't there most of the time when they got there, you know, the first time I was there, I was a, you know, the existing parts from the previous year. And then we just kept plugging in, plugging in, plugging it in. And everybody, you know, saw the mentality. Everybody adjusted to the mentality. Well, the second three-peat was I brought my mentality to a team that was already existing. So now I had to apply that. And it was much more difficult to do that, you know, in the second three-peat than the first. Uh, and, you know, not that it, you know, obviously it worked, but it put a lot of, you know, mental and physically, you know, straining, you know, situations, um, you know, with teammates, you know, and, and understanding, you know, the, the mentality that it took to win. Uh, and we got there and we appreciate it. And, you know, the 96 was probably the toughest one uh, because I was coming from, you know, a defeat in 95 where I played baseball. Everyone thought I was a step slower. Um, you know, so I had to prove myself, you know, and uh, my father, you know, the first time I actually done it without my father. So, I mean, all these emotions and all these different things are coming at me. And, you know, to me, that was the most difficult if I had to pick of the six. Uh, and then once we were able to understand, OK, this is Michael Jordan, he's he's going to be aggressive. This is Luke. He's going to be somewhat passive, but you got to pull him along. Steve Kerr, you got to get him encouraged. Dennis, you got to pull him in every now and then. He's going to be Dennis. Scotty's going to be Scotty. You know, once we understood how the players were on that team, it clicked. You know, no wonder we won 72 games, you know, the following year. And then, you know, we was a able to, to maintain, you know, what we did uh, pretty much in the th second three-peat. But it took a process, so it was much harder. Thank you. Now, look, the last dance was absolutely huge in Australia. Everyone loved it. Um, but Australian viewers also wondered why Luke wasn't involved and why Luke wasn't interviewed. What's your take on that, Michael? You know, if you can say that a, a lot. And, and the thing is, that I, I had no control in terms of who you, who you were going to interview. Um, there was a lot of guys that said the same thing. And Jason could answer it much better than I because it was more of their control, you know, and once again, um, he was and is, you know, a, a integral part to this whole process. And I think that, you know, we, if you look back and say, well, we, we should have included Luke, we should have included, you know, other players that were significant to the team. And it's hard, you know, but, you know, I, I had no control over that. And, I, you know, it's unfortunate and I can understand why Australia would, say, well, why wouldn't we include Luke? And we probably should have. And, and, and that was, I guess, if you look back and say, if I could change anything, that's probably what I could have changed, uh, where uh, you would want to interview every single body and get a perspective from a lot of different angles. Now, your desire to win and your, your toughness on the team as a result of that is absolutely legendary and was explored in The Last Dance. Luke described your leadership style as carnivorous. <laughs> what, what do you think about that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can see that from his perspective. Quite naturally, yes, I can see that. And look, I didn't go in there with that mentality. <laughs> That's how it's going to. It's just so, so, you know, my mentality was to win at all costs, you know, and, and pull, push, yank, whatever, to get everybody on the same page. Uh, and, you know, it's, I understand it. I understand it. And, and, you know, the thing is, is that if I were to change my personality back, you know, to, to something totally different, uh, I wouldn't be who I would have been. I don't think we would have had the same successes. Um, I think a lot of players probably wouldn't have been the same in terms of their perspective, you know. Um, so, yeah, 
Yeah, I can see him saying that, but the thing is, is that I think it was needed in some respect, and um, and I think our success illustrates that. One of the themes of this story in Luke's life, it's sort of charting Luke's life, is the fact that he did have to change. He was a gentle giant. He got to the NBA, he had to kind of put on the armour and toughen up. And then he found once his NBA career was over, he found it very difficult to shed that sort of tough armour that he'd had to sort of gird himself with. Um, uh, and that, he, he quite struggled with that for quite a long time. Can, can you relate to that? 110%. Uh, part of my struggles after the game is my competitive drive. You know, I was such a competitive player and each and every day felt the need to always get ahead of my opponent. Well, when you're out of sports and you, you're in, you know, in normal life, you know, you don't shed that armor that you actually have coated yourself with, you know, based on you know, the, your lifestyle and that work ethic, you know, it's just, you have to find your way around it. And that's frustrating. And sometimes that's even tough, you know, because of the competitive nature that I have. I look at everything from a competitive nature, you know, and I, 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 I tell my wife all the time is that I'm cursed. I'm cursed from a competitive standpoint that, you know, I cannot watch or compete or be a part of things without competition, you know. Um, and that's something that, you know, I live with today, but I would not want to live without, you know, uh, because I think it, it says so much about me and helped me define who I really want or was or am and attained all the things I really wanted. Uh, now is the challenge is to calm those nerves, you know. That's why I do a lot more fishing now. Um, I would, I would have never thought I would get on a boat and go fishing. But the competition of patience and being, you know, trying to catch a fish, trying to be patient, it's not going to happen. You can't make it happen. You just have to be ready when it does happen. Those are all things that I think calms me down a lot more than if I'm playing a sport, you know, if I'm playing golf or if I'm doing anything competitive. Because I think that, you know, that's what I need. That's the therapy that I need to help soothe some of these competitive juices that I have. Well, that's interesting because Luke loves fishing too, loves boats and fishings. When you look back on those years, was it sad to say goodbye to your teammates like Luke once the sort of Chicago Bulls and that team were no more? Yes, and it's still sad. I mean, look, Luke emails me all the time and I, every time I see it, you know, good day, mate. It brings a smile to my face in the sense that, you know, we don't spend the type of time we used to, even though, you know, if you ask him or you ask me, I, I think it was genuine time, you know, even though we were competing and we were learning about each other and we were pushing each other, blah, blah, blah. Those are still genuine times, you know, and you don't share those with too many people, you know. So, yeah, I miss I miss spending time with him. You know, I miss seeing, you know, that face that's never going to be sad no matter what happens you know um you know he's just he's just funny i think the thing that was in amazement of every time i would spin and see luke it was a shock to see someone he was looking at me and i could feel this coming from him is that how can one person be so competitive each and every day and blah blah, blah and yet he doesn't seem like he's enjoying life when that's and when actually i was i was enjoying the competition that was who that was my enjoyment I sensed that sometimes when he used to look at me, you know, and just kind of, you know, and I didn't take it negatively. I, I took it as a, as a badge of honor. I, t I take my, my job seriously. I take my competitive nature very seriously. Um, but sometimes looking at him and seeing and joking and, you know, we sense of humor and, you know, uh, it, it, it's fun and you miss that, you know, you miss that, that you know, that celebration of, of, of you know, starting a goal at the beginning of the year and then at the end of the year, you, you know, the gratification that we, we went through hell to get here, but we got here and let's just enjoy it. Let's have fun and let's do it again in, in another three months. You know, that was the mentality. You missed that in 98. And you're a busy man, Michael. Uh, why did you agree to take time out of your schedule for, um, for Luke to do this interview for Luke? He matters to me. Yeah, you know, it, he does matter to me and his story needs to be told. 
and I, I'm pretty sure I can enlighten it from my perspective and, you know, and, and, and give him, give people his meaningfulness to me, you know, as a teammate, as a competitor. Uh, sure, I mean, there's some, some good and there's some bad, but that's all a part of life. You know, you're going to have friends that you have good and bad things about, you know, but we went through the trenches. We, we, we shared a lot, you know, we competed together and, and, you know, I would take him any day of the week, if, you know, if I had to go through a competition again. If you ask me to do it all over again, there's no way I would leave Luke Longley off my team. No way possible because he mattered. You know, he, he had an impact on me. He helped me change as a person. So, I mean, um, to hear that they're, they're recognizing him and you would think, you would think, you know, most people think, what can they be saying about Luke in a documentary? You can be saying a lot about the guy, and I, I, I'm, I'm a, uh, I am a, you know, example of what he meant to me and how he made me better as a player, you know, as a person.